yeah. Sorry. Like 10 minutes before the hour, my daughter FaceTimed me and and uh, wedding things and um, family's gonna always take priority. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't seen her face in a while and I hadn't talked to her in a while. So thank you, Joseph. Cheers. So I should probably go over to the Discord and see how, like what you guys were speculating. <laughs> Uh, like, is he dead? Is he sick? Is he? Yeah, no, it's just, and, and Bruce tried to call me, but I, I, I was really, I, I didn't want to stop. I was in having a good conversation with my daughter. So, you know, that's, like I said, that's just gonna, uh, general chit chat. Yeah. Here you guys go get all busy here. He's live. Tom is live. <laughs> it's funny. You're like, Hey, where, what the heck is Tom? What's, what's he doing? What's going on? Is he going to speak? Yeah. So appreciate you guys looking after me. Uh, yeah. So, oh, thank you, Lena. So, this, um, yeah, hopefully Bruce will jump on here in a second because he was the one that called. But like I said, I just didn't want to break away from my daughter. So. You guys can hear me okay? Yeah, I saw that you were chatting. <laughs> Probably more fun. someone commented on one of my live stream recent live stream scale videos you, know, you don't teach scales you got to teach how to play music you know and scales is a lot and it's like they're you know chewing me out for teaching scales it's like no you still need to learn scales scales come in handy I'll tell you you know one thing that comes to mind with scales is when you're having to sight read music um, and you need it's kind of busy or kind of difficult or you got to keep your eyes on the chart you cannot take your eyes off the chart or you're gonna lose your when you look down at your hands, you look back up, you're not going to be able to um, find your place. You're going to get lost. And so that's not good, right? Now, if it's a recording, you got to start all over again. If it's a live thing, well, then, you know, everybody's like, where's the guitar player? <laughs> well, you try to find your, where, where are we? Uh, I lost track. Um, and so, like, if the song's in C and the lowest note is A and the highest note is C, this C up here, then you know that if you just play a C scale right here, that every note you're going to have to read is going to be right there. You never have to look down at your hand. You can just keep your eyes on the chart. Now, if you want to, you can, you can start to make it a little bit more musical as you get more comfortable with the music. But yeah, so scales are a great tool for helping you to to know the boundaries of good notes, the in inbounds notes on your uh, on your fretboard, so when you're reading, you don't have to look at your hands. I mean, that's just one thing. Uh, another thing is, if you want to write music, you know, a lot of times music's diatonic. You want to know what key you're in, um, and uh, you want to be in a specific key, or you have to be in a specific key. So I, I don't know. So regardless. For, for this scale that I'm showing you, the major blue scale. So basically what it is, it's a major pentatonic. And we'll, we'll play that in a second. It's a major pentatonic with a flat three added. So you can kind of get that. You can kind of turn that happy major pentatonic scale, which is two notes shy of a major scale. Okay, major scale is do, re, mi. And we get rid of the fourth note and the seventh note, we end up with major pentatonic. All right. Um, and that, that works over the C, the A7 kind of. But adding that flat third in there makes it sound a little bit more bluesy. Now, you got a sixth. I'll explain this in a second. And the, the seventh chord has a seventh. So we could actually... Kind of come up with a hybrid scale, um, but 
any regardless that the major pentatonic is nice I mean when we play the the standard bluegrass lick that everybody has to learn that's a major pentatonic I mean I'm sorry that's a major blue scale one two flat three three five six one So that's basically what this is. Yeah, you can try to get it that, this way. Uh, okay, I don't see Bruce on here. I'm going to text him. He tried it. Like I said, he tried to call him. Sorry, I have to do it for my phone, which is fine. All right, Bruce, where are you? Is he on yet? No. I, okay. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> All right, I'm telling him I'm on now. All right, there we go. Oh, okay. All right, thanks, Holly. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, this this actually, I have a, uh, let me do like a, let me change this harmony on this pad here. Or, you know what, let me do this. Let me go to, let me go to the piano. So we got... something like that Two. a little bit more happy all right so that's just basically I'm just sitting on an A chord went to the six, went to the two every now and then, which are all um, notes in this scale. All right, but I did not go to the flat three. I'm gonna let the flat three be in the, the scale. No, well, that was kind of lame. What the heck? Oh, you know what I'm gonna do, I'll move everything to the eighth note. That'll be better. of this scale uh, let me go to a cleaner sound let me know if I'm too loud and kind of breaking up I'm trying to watch the meters down here I can see it kind of go into the red I want to try to keep it from that um, yes and um, so what but the thing is Sam and I'm gonna talk about this in a second so let's let's put that let's let's table that for now okay so a major pentatonic and we've talked about major, we've talked about the scale before too. We talked about the scale in the context of the bluegrass stuff when we were doing that. We learned a bunch of different scales that you could use in the key of G to play over, you know, a, G, a basic G, G blues, uh, bluegrass progression. Um, why are you doing that? Okay. So, um, 
And so the, the like I said, the the major pentatonic is kind of like a major scale hollowed out a little bit with a couple notes, you know, taken out. So a major scale, we can play, let's start with that. We'll start with a major scale. Okay, C, we have A. Uh, so start with your second finger on the fifth fret of the bottom string, and then use your pinky on the seventh fret. There's D. So it's gonna be A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. But the skeleton of it, it'll be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But there's gonna be a bunch of sharps in there. So you have A, then B, and then uh, fourth fret with the first finger, C sharp, and then D at the fifth fret, then E at the seventh fret, and then F sharp at the fourth fret on the fourth string, and then on the sixth fret of the fourth string is G sharp, and then we have pinky on the A. You can play that for me again. So A, B, okay, I'll just give you fret numbers. Five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, or four, six, seven. Backwards, seven, six, five, uh, seven, six, four, seven, five, four, seven, five. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. A uh, do re mi scale. If we take out the um, uh, the fourth note, the D note, and the seventh note, the uh, G sharp there, we end up with what's called a major pentatonic. Pentatonic being a five note scale. A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp, and a. Um, and the notes in that are the one, two, three, five, six. The sixth, okay? So let's play that. That would be five. And however you want to finger it is fine, but five, seven, four, seven, four, seven. And we can keep going. Four, six. And you'll remember this shape. And then five, seven, and five, seven on the top. Backwards, seven, five, seven, five. Then six, four. So however you want to do that shift. You can keep your finger, you can keep using your second and fourth finger on those top two if you want. For just dexterity purposes, if nothing else. And then pinky on the A note. And then first finger. Uh, so then we go, sorry. Uh, uh, six, four, seven, four, seven, four, seven, five. I like to play it in fourths, but you like adjacent string stuff. It's really good for the picking the right hand and the left hand. are fairly easy on a lot of instruments like piano and violin but on guitar they're a little bit tough you got to do this kind of finger roll thing don't worry Bob I just I just I just logged on I was talking to my daughter for an hour uh, like I said I haven't I hadn't talked to her in a while and she FaceTimed me right before I was supposed to go on so I'm trying to keep my priorities right I'm trying to be a good dad um, so let's see now. So what we're going to do to this scale is we're going to add the flat three. So we got the one, the two, and then the flat three would be the C natural like that. There's a couple different ways. It's not, it's not the most, you know, and it's, and if you want to think about it, you can think of it being based on this A chord here. It's, it's, you know, some, some of the, just like the pentatonic, the minor blues, some of the shapes are a little kind of weird, or some of the flat thirds are kind of hard to get to. And this, this starts out kind of that way. you got a couple different options. You can either play it with your, reach down with your first finger and get that C note, and go to C sharp. Or you could go like that, go uh, five, seven, eight, and then jump down to four. Play it 
down there so much. It's more, you know, there's certain certain ways that you're going to, certain snippets, sections of the scale you're going to use more than, you know, that's, and so that's where I might come to agree with, you know, hey, don't just play scales, you know, because there's parts of, like, that, that part of that scale, you know, I would totally play it that way. See what I did there? I played the open A string, then I played, it'd be basically a real simple way to play that lick. Okay, in A. So what I'm doing is hitting the open A string, and then I'm going two, three, four. Okay, and then I'm going two, four, two. I'm going five, six, five, and then to the one, to the A. I wouldn't play it. I wouldn't play it. I can't even do it. It's just not natural. See? So, you know, so practicing the scales all up and down, you know, not as critical, but if you if you did some you know something like that, then you know that's much more of a musical idea. But you're using the scale, and the scale is showing, oh, this okay, I can hit these notes. These notes are fair game. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Bob. Um, Let's see, Scott Jacobs, good morning. AJ, hey, good to see you, AJ. <laughs> I'm a liver. Jack Lloyd, good to see you. Bar Barrister, what's happening? And Lena, thank you so much for that. It means a lot. Peroni's in the house. I saw Peroni early on. I forgot to mention you. Sorry about that. Yeah, we got. We don't have quite have a quorum, but that's all right. It's my bad for not starting on time. I lose a lot of the regulars. They probably, do, like, they logged in, they didn't see me in, they go like, oh, I guess Tom's taking the day off. Or Tom's sick or something. My ears were jacked up all weekend, which is so frustrating. I was wearing ears and I just had no top end. And my ears are fried. I mean, it's just, my left ear is almost completely deaf at this point. But um, I'm actually going to go to an ear doctor and have them clean them out and everything and see if there's anything I can do. But... Um, so yeah, so that so this part, you know, like if we play this A chord here, A bar chord, or you don't have to be able to play, just visualize it. It's the E form moved up. Okay, so it looks like an E chord if you were just to play these three notes. Um, but right there, I've got that nice little snippet of this scale. You can see the added note there. Every time you see three notes together, those are the... So it's just like a chromatic flourish into the third, which again, the third... Oh, shoot. I posted the Discord link, but I didn't pin it. Sorry. Ma buy it. Pin. All right. Done, boss. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I'm, at some point, I, I just saw that the, that they, uh, they're they making, um, I think it's so you can buy uh, hearing aids over the counter now instead of having to go through all that rigmarole, so, which is cool. Um, I'm not there yet. Um, I, I don't, my hearing's not that bad. Um, but uh, it's just, it's definitely some of the high end I, I was missing and that, you know, it just, it just sound, everything sent, just sounded kind of like a, I had a head cold apparently. So I took some Sudafed and, and um, it seemed to clear up, but I haven't used my ears. I have my ears right here. You can see my in-ear monitors here molded. Um, so if I have some acoustic stuff to record this week, I'll, I'll use them. Otherwise I'm going through the speakers. Um, which I need to adjust the placement of my speakers a little bit. I think I need to get that one closer. So um, I'll work on that after we're done. So uh, yeah, so this is this is just kind of like I said, it's a it's a great little scale for um, for playing over a, a major chord. Major 
pentatonic and hit at the flat third. Like if I just To me, it always sounds like George Benson because he would often play over, play over, you know, uh, uh, like major, you know, like, uh, you know. Um, so let me do, let's see, what key would that be? It would be D. Let me do an A. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me just have to get rid of the bass. Actually, I'll, I'll play it in D because I can, I can play it in D without thinking about it. Uh, and I'll tell you what chords I'm playing here in a second. E minor 7. E minor 7, and then G over A. And that's it. So that's kind of, let me just quantize it because I'm not perfect. And so this, oh, and I want to move it to the key of A. All right, so. Uh, are A major 7 to F major, F minor 7, F sharp minor 7, sorry, God, my brain is still fried. A major 7 to F sharp minor 7 to B minor 7, which is the 2 chord, and then, yeah, I don't have earwax problem at all. I never get earwax, so, but I, that's one of the things I'm going to have to do is clean out my ears when I go, so, just in case. There may be a little bit in there that's kind of getting in the wrong spot. <laughs> okay, if I play piano, you can you can take a drink. <laughs> we, we, we need new rules because I'm just not breaking the rules anymore. Although what I, I my uh, my my uh, Martin's tuned weird though. Let me pull that up and show you about. Okay. So, so the so the progression was A major seven to F sharp minor seven to B minor seven to kind of a um, D over E, okay? Yeah, but you can be drinking too much if I keep going back and forth between pianos. So uh, D over E, which would be like, all right. Um, and what that is is um, it's kind of a. You could think of it as a D11 chord, but basically I'm just playing a D triad with an E in the bass. Okay, so it's 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 basically the chord progression for Breezen, but we change the key of A, and then, like I said, there's no C natural in this chord progression. This chord progression is very diatonic. Here's one way to play D over E, okay? Like that, you see that? So I'm basically playing a D chord, but I'm barring with my first finger. And then I'm just moving up one more finger, one, one more string and getting that E in the bass. So I'm playing an E, and I'm playing an A, a D, and an F sharp, or two, two, three, two. And that's D over E. Another way to play it is just a bar at the Seventh fret and play the middle four strings. Exact same voicing. If you add, if you add that B, that's not horrific. So it'd be like, but very, 
very smooth jazz kind of chord progression. And it's also very 70s chord progression. But it's a one, six, two, five. And the six, the F sharp minor is just a sub for the one chord. So I could sit on the one chord. Uh, and then go to the two. Uh, to the five. To one. But the, the F sharp minor kind of breaks it up. You can whatever you do over the one chord works fine over the six chord. Um, and like I said, that's a that's a relative minor or that's a minor substitution. Um, and we we talked about that way back when we talked about songwriting. It was a trick you could do if you wanted to change up a song. You could swap out the E minor for the G. And the, the melody you wrote over G would work over the E minor just as just as well, but it creates a little bit of a, uh, a change to make the song more interesting. And so that's kind of what this one, six, two, five progression is. All right. So right now I'm just playing pure major pentatonic. flat third. Uh, over any of those chords, it's fine. I'll stay down here just so you can kind of see it. Two five at the end, not two four. Even though it's a D chord, it's it's implying a five chord. So um, so that that D over E is is just another. It's it's kind of a variation on the E seven. It's like if you add the ninth to an E seven and then you add the eleventh, you add the thirteenth, you get you're basically going to get a D over an E. Um, so it's just a it's a softer five chord than a D. So listen to this. Here's E7, right? Well, it helps. Them. <laughs> See how not soft this is? See how soft this is? <laughs> Use dynamics to make my point. Okay, but like the the E the E7's a little bit more like. You know, it's a little bit more bluesy. It's a little, it's a little bit more hokey. I don't want to say hokey, but you know, but I said it. So there, the D over E or the E11. Some people will call it that. If I put that B in there, if I get the, um, usually when you have the 11th, you know, you don't have the fourths or the third. So anyway, it's a, it's, it's, it serves as a five chord. So it would be. Um, Peroni, you were you were seventy five percent correct. So it'd be one, and then six, two, five. That's essentially what it is. So it's A, um, major seven, to F sharp minor seven, to B minor seven, to I, I'm playing D over E. It's the bass note that really is kind of implies the the chord in that con in that sense. Uh, the E that E really kind of makes it sound like a five chord. If I played, I could play a D chord, but that would be totally or a D major, but it'd be a different progression. Listen, there's a six, there's a seven, there's a See, that just doesn't quite do the same thing. It's a nice, it's a totally nice progression. It's pretty, but the five, 
is stronger. The five leads better. And George would do this too. He would do that kind of movement or what was the thing he would do? He would, oh. He would do that. So it was in the key of A. He might do the sharp five. Uh, the E7 sharp five going into it. So like, you know, there's several ways you could play, but I was playing a flat five. I'll show you how to do that chord. Okay, the E7 flat five. Check this out. You could also, well, check this out. So this is a sidebar, okay? This is jazz guitar sidebar. All right, play a C chord for me. All right. Add the seventh. So, shoot, how do I... <laughs> Right there, put your pinky on the third string, third fret. There's, there's a, there's an E, there's a C7. Okay, don't play any open string, just go up a fret. C sharp seven, go up another fret. D7, go up another fret. E flat or D sharp seven, and now go up another fret. We have, there's E7. And what we have here is, e, so you, you can hit all the strings if you want. Just, you wouldn't want to do it on, on F7 or E flat seven. But you can do it on E7 if you want to hit the other string. But we're, don't, don't for now. This way, what you're learning is completely trans, uh, movable and, and trans, uh, uh, transposable. But what we have here is we have E, G sharp, D, E. Okay. Oh, that's okay. So there won't be a quiz on this. <laughs> you, you can order that mug. I don't think anyone's ordered. I haven't even looked to see if anyone's ordered any of that stuff. It's hilarious. Uh, so we have E, G sharp, D, and E. We have a root, a third, the dominant seventh or flat seventh, the D, and then the E, another root. There's no fifth. So so it's one, three, seven. We we need a, we could have a five. Well, if we wanted to add a fifth, we could just take the that third finger down to the fifth string or bottom string. Okay, and mute the A string now. So it's now we have basically it's seven, nothing, six, seven, five, nothing. Let me move this around. Okay, stay stay with me. So this is the fifth on the bottom. That's a B. So if we want to do a E7 flat five, we just move that down a fret. Well, I'm probably gonna refinger. And look, that's that chord is really these two notes really want to go down to that A chord. Okay. Any questions? Um, well, the the major pen, the major um, pentatonic does not have a seventh in it. The minor pentatonic has a seventh in it. The major pentatonic uses a sixth instead. Uh, because our pentatonic scales don't typically have um, the minor seconds. I mean, we could create a pentatonic scale. We could do... Right? That, that would be a major pentatonic with a seventh in it. But... The, uh, the the major pentatonic that is basically, and I'm going to show you a trick that I've showed you before. But it just this sounds really good over, like I said, a very simple vanilla one one six two five progression. Because it's pentatonic, it's the same as your minor pentatonics, just moved down two frets or three frets. Um, or yeah, technically moved down to three frets. And we're gonna talk about that next, okay? Um, all of your fast riffs that you've worked on with the pentatonic shapes have all worked. I'm at the 
the 12th fret. See those three chromatic notes? And if you want to, you could go to that do dominant seventh. That would be like a bonus note, right? Like I got. That would be, be, be a very um, soul, R&B, bluesy thing to do. Even jazzy, all those kind of genres and styles all cross pollinate with each other. Yep, one, two, three, one, two, three. simple progressions like that uh let me look up in my jam tracks i i should have do i have an a a two five one in a let's see if i have it uh what am i looking for my youtube playlist i'm almost out of coffee come on uh playlist jam track I, I, I meant to uh, upload that jam track. I really apologize. I've got a couple things I can upload. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll right past it and not see it. I've done this a hundred times. I'm like, where are my jam tracks? And I, I just looked right at it and didn't see it. Uh, gosh darn it. No, I know I've done it one recently. Usually they it's kind of chronological. Oh, there they are. See, I did totally look past them. So I have 80 of them. So surely I've got a 251, oh, oh, a 561. Okay, that's a minor jam for live stream. Okay, that was for blues and E. 251 jam track in C. Two five practice in A flat. Ooh, I have A. Look at here it is. Hundred and okay. It's okay. So look. Yeah. So. Um, let's see here. I'll, I'll post a link here. It doesn't have the. Um, it doesn't have. It doesn't have the six chord in there. So it's just two five and then sits. So one bar of two, one bar of five, and then two bars of the of the one chord. So it's a, a slightly simpler version of it. Um, so let me, let me post this here, I'm copying, and it's 110 beats per minute, but this is basically the, what, what I'm talking about here. Oh, dang, where are you guys? There you are. <laughs> you guys are hiding from me here. I, I got too many windows open and I got two screens now, but I'm like dragging stuff around and covering stuff up. Lenny chords. Yes. And my inner harmony. I can't. What's that? What is that from Harry Potter? Yes, say you make me some coffee, please. I'm almost out. That would be great. <laughs> you guys crack up and say he walk through that door and hand me a new coffee. I just ignored. <laughs> All right. So. Um, And I know a Sadie. I don't think you're the Sadie I know, though. You would say something. Um, so, 
Um, all right, so here's the thing. You see the where it says R's, right? Those R's. Those are the roots. Okay, those are all roots. And those are the A notes. So the root is A. We're in the key of A. You know, I play this progression. All right. Now, what I want you to do is look at every one of those R's and look at the note below it. Okay. And by below it, I mean to the above it <laughs> on the diagram okay but pitch wise we're going down right but on the same string if you can like you can't go down three notes from this but if the very note below is this f sharp here on this a right here's a here's the f sharp this a all right uh, if you play okay now if you take this scale and move it up three frets that note that you just played that f sharp now becomes an a and that's the minor root and you play the same scales the same shapes now you're playing the minor blues okay uh somebody uh sam you mentioned this uh someone else mentioned this and i said no hold on don't get ahead of me here okay and so what you can do and like i said I apologize if I bring up George Benson too much, but he was like a huge influence on me. Like I wanted to be George Benson when I was a kid. And um, one of the things that he's really go good at is going back and forth between major pentatonic and minor pentatonics over the same chord progression. So in other words, if I play the, if I take this scale that's written there, okay, and move it up to here, now I'm playing A minor blues. If I play it down here, I'm playing A major blues. Okay? A major blues, A minor blues. Exact same shape, but the notes change. So instead of having an, an F sharp, an A, a B, a C, a C sharp, and, a, and, a, and an E, we're going to have an A, a C, a D, a D sharp, or an E flat. So now we have the flat five that Sam was talking about. Okay, so let's look at, let me play that and I'll go back and forth. So I'm gonna start out in major, my, uh, major blues. Okay, all the way through, now I'm gonna go to minor. The duration, but to use it, for example, when I was playing in that minor blues, I wanted to go to that major third that's in the major blues. in there now. It rubs. 
dubs. Kind of has that flat nine sound over the E chord. Minor. Major. So you can go back and forth at will between those two scales. Um, you want to practice that a little bit. Uh, let me let me let me try to give you a little exercise. Let's do a little exercise, okay? Let's do do that. Four on the third string. Four, five, six, five, seven, five, and then maybe go down to to the one there. Okay, and then. Uh, play the blues, uh, the minor blues. So we have seven, five, seven, eight, five, eight, five. You can even go up eight. Oh, the okay. Sorry. Let me. Uh, that piano is probably not helping. It could be the guitar too. I'm just rolling off the bass on the whole mix. Turn that a little bit. So you can practice. And then play the minor. If we did a hybrid thing, we could, we could literally, if we added that major third and the the uh, the second, the two from the major pentatonic or the major blues to the flat third, four and flat five and five of the minor blues, you end up with a chromatic passage. All of those notes are good. Now, would you play all those? Sure, but there's no reason why not. But just knowing that they're all good, A, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. I do this a lot. That chromatic thing from the third to the fifth. That's blue bassa or, and blue monk. Um, I could also go from the second to the fourth. And then go to the third. But but just even playing the minor blues, knowing that that note is good, that that C sharp is good, is golden. down to that second. Okay. I'm going to let this play for a second. Yeah, sounds great. Do it. <laughs> Practice that scale. Sounds great. Yeah, Holly, very good. <laughs> Barrister, that was nice. <laughs> Joseph, yeah, play the flat third now. <laughs> Just mess with you guys. Yeah, we probably need to do another Zoom thing, don't we? Okay, so again, again, all you have to do with this is just 
you're playing this scale, you know, if you do the work on learning some of these scales, um, you can move them up. So if I take this scale at the second fret, two, five, two, three, four, two, four, two, four, five, two, five, two, five. And that feels like the old blues scale that we did over the, like a blues. It, it, it's exact same pattern, but the notes are a minor third away. So if you, but if you play that, in fact, let me do it. I'll play that over this chord progression. It'll sound like a major blues. And then I'm going to move it up three frets, which I, that's kind of where I've been playing it anyway. And that's going to be the minor blues. So check this out. See, it's exact same scale. different sound. The fingerings are the same, the notes are different, and it has a totally different sound over the chord progression. See, I'm back to the major blues. Minor blues. because he's the chord progression is so so pleasant <laughs> so pretty you know so that flat third sounds good every now and then and it's in the flat third is in that minor third is in the major blues but we usually use it as kind of a kind of a passing chord or I mean a passing note to get to the C sharp but when we're in the minor blues it, it's it's more of a feature than a bug. <laughs> and so you, can, you might want to take that C to the C sharp over this progression because it'll just sound a little bit more resolved. And you can go back and forth. I'll, let me alternate chords. I'll go... Over one chord, I'll do the major blues, and over the next chord, I'll do the minor blues, okay? So here we get to the five chord. Major blues. Minor. Major. string five six and then on the next strings five seven five right okay but that's the little lick that uses this major blue scale If I move that up three frets, I'm going to get that. That lick is going to sound more minor bluesy. It's going to be in the minor blues. Okay. So check this out. Seven 
Become 11 by uh, Charlie Christian. Yeah, uh, BB King definitely uses this scale a lot. Um, he'll he'll use the minor uh, blues, but with a sixth instead of a seventh, which is kind of a hybrid between the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, right? The minor pentatonic is one uh, flat three, four, five, and seven. The major pentatonic is one, two, three, five, and six. So both of them have a one and a five. Um, but the, uh, so BB definitely goes to that C sharp or the, the third every now and then too. So this could, this would probably be something, this scale would be more likely closer to what BB uses than this. Uh, or, sorry, this one. He doesn't use that one as much either. Or he did use it. never surfed I'm not very athletic I wish I was uh, you know and it's like tennis was you know and I'll run and do you know work out and stuff like that but I never played football I was too small to play football in school I wanted to basketball I'm blind in one eye so you know they call me air straley because <laughs> I because I, I throw air balls up because <laughs> I think the I think the net's here and it's it's there so, um, uh, yeah, I've never done skateboarding. You know, it's funny because I, I tend to avoid things that where I might break a wrist or a finger or something because, like, skiing, I've never done skiing. Because I've been playing guitar since I was, you know, 13. I knew what I wanted to do. Skateboarding really just started hitting when I was 13. Um, and so I had some friends that got into it. In fact, I had friends that would do the pool thing. They would go and skateboard in pools. Like that was a thing. Um, I, you know, I never, I didn't have, I, don't, I, I think I, I don't have the uh, balance to do that kind of stuff. I really don't. Um, wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's right, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry I didn't answer your call. I was on the phone with Emma. Emma, FaceTime me. So I just was like, uh, this is takes priority. I hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. I hadn't talked to her in a couple of weeks. Um, so we were talking about the wedding stuff and then Christmas and Thanksgiving plans and all that. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe what I should do is go fly up there for Thanksgiving the week, a couple days before Thanksgiving and surprise her or something that would be, you know, Kind of fun. Um, but yeah, but her fiance really likes his new job a lot. He's working with a homeless in um, Spokane. It's a homeless ministry in Spokane. So he's, and they, they really, really, really like him and he really likes his boss. And so it's going really well. And that was a big thing. I mean, he quit his job to go where she was because she just gotten a new job when they started dating. And so she couldn't like quit that job and move to where he was. So he did the opposite. So, cause she'd made a commitment. Um, yeah, you know, um, I have a feeling in the new heaven and new earth, we will have new bodies and our bodies will be able to do whatever we want them to do. So I'm looking forward to that. Actually reading a book about biblical, biblical references to the new earth and what it's going to, what it's going to be like. And animals will be there. The do maybe even our dogs and cats will be there. So it sounds like it literally sounds like heaven. Uh, and like, I think that and it says a lion will lie down with a lamb. And that means that, um, that I guess, uh, the implication there is that lions will be herbivores, no longer carnivores. So that won't affect lambs anymore. It's interesting. So, 
um, I mean, I always implied that from that verse. A long, you know, back when I first heard it, I went, oh, okay. That must mean that the lion's not going to try to eat the lamb. <laughs> there was also other symbolic meanings for it, but but it was, but it actually was, you know. So, and so, like, there's a heaven, and then the new earth is, comes after. And that's, theologically speaking, that means that the, that the earth is going to get rebuilt the way it's supposed to be. So, if you were wondering, we can research it. Um, is that a... No, uh, let me look it up. I'll, I'll, I'll find it because, um, uh, what's his name? Dang it. Uh, shoot, what's his name? I'm trying to think of the name of the book. I can't even think of the name of the book. Uh, oh, John El Eldridge. John Eldridge. So he, he did Wild at Heart, which a lot, I'm not a big Christian lit guy. I just never, you know, I just don't think it's, it's like, you know, and, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and, you know, but Christian movies are embarrassing. <laughs> but it's just because they don't have the money, you know, or it's a, it's a sub sector of, okay, so the book is All Things New. Um, and, it, and Beth and I are reading it together. So uh, here, I'll, 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 I'll create a link for it. So if you want to check it out, and if you buy it, I make a little coin. Anything, you know, it, even if you don't, if you just go to the, uh, click on this and go do your Amazon shopping, that helps. I get a, I get a little percentage of that. But um, yeah, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's called All Things New, and it's uh, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's basic, you know, it's, it's, it's a deep dive into the, you know, it's, there's a lot more verses about that than I thought there were, you know, the Bible's a thick book, but anyway, yeah, essentially the New Jerusalem, you know, that's another term for it, you know, city on a hill, but it's, We'll see. <laughs> I have no idea. Hopefully, I'll see you there. <laughs> I'm just like, just give me a broom. Just let me in, please. I want a broom. <laughs> uh, are there Christian scales? There's a Christian chord, G sus. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, it's funny, Ali. By your name, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge. I love Arabic music, and I love the macams, uh, the but, you know, Arabic music is mind-blowing to me because, and keep in mind, Arabic music, that was what the music that Jesus listened to. So, like, the, the Do Re Mi stuff, you know, the, the Bach and everything. Uh -oh, we have to tune. Um, all that Bach stuff, that was nothing like what Jesus, you know, would have heard 2,000 years ago. Or, you know, before that... Moses or Abraham or, you know, Rachel or Muhammad, you know, the music of that time was, you know, people like to argue, was it major, minor, was it, you know, no, it was probably, it was more Arabic and Arabic music has a notation for 54 notes per octave. We have 12 notes per octave. That's it. Okay. So if I were to say there were Christian scales, I would probably have to say that they're much more skewed towards being Arabic. You know, there might be some, <laughs> if there's a Christian scale, but no, that, there's nothing technically Christian about any specific scales. So um, I have body surfed, but yeah, that, but I don't really go out in the ocean. I don't really like it. I don't mind. Um, uh, I don't mind swimming in the lake, but ocean, I'm not a big fan of. I don't know. I, I'm jealous of my friends that can get a wetsuit on and go out and surf all day. I, 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 do, I do think that that would be something that would be amazing, um, but I get bored easily. <laughs> Ollie jumps in. Ollie jumps in on the, the Christian scale thing. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's just... But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a Christian scale, but... But the, the um, and that's a diatonic scale. 
Remember, that's the that's a that's the uh, that's a that's the fifth fifth mode of G minor harmonic minor, which I love that scale. Macombs are often not diatonic, and I don't know. So my 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 oud's not tuned, but and this is this is my my cheater oud. Ah, did I really leave the? Oh wait, oh no, I didn't. Okay, good. I may break a string. Most oods have friction tuners or uh, peg tuners that are that are one to one gear ratio. So the tuning is D, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think it's D or five on the bottom, and I think that's because most of the key most of the keys are D, G, and A keys. And that way you can always hit that that bottom note to kind of have uh, um, oh nice you're from Iraq nice and living in Holland I love Holland I've never been to Iraq I doubt I'll ever go but it is the it is the it is the uh, it's kind of the origin of all civilization kind of came from that area right the Mesopotamian Valley Every Iraqi guy I've ever known has been cooler than me by a long shot. <laughs> of course, I'm not too, it's pretty easy to be cooler than me. Okay, so again, I'm tuning G, A, or I'm sorry, G, sorry, A, uh, brain, D, G, A. The nylon strings, they, they, it's been a while since I've tuned this thing up. But it's cool, it's got a built-in preamp and, and see the, the tuner? I gotta remember to turn it off though because the battery will go dead if I don't. Okay, well thank you, Holly. <laughs> Holly, Holly, I'm combining your first and last name. So so that scale I play uh, with the D, um, right? Uh, that's pretty much, pretty close to what I was just playing on my nylon guitar, playing D, E flat, F sharp, G, A, B flat, D. Okay, but in Saudi Arabia, in, in Arabic music, um, that's a scale, that's a legit scale that they would use. But more likely, they actually would not play E flat, they wouldn't play E, they'd play the note in between. So they're playing this note that's in between E flat and E, so it sounds like this. Here's what it sounded like before. They do this. And it's a little happier. It's like, this is not, this is weird. A little sad, but it's not quite. Hard to play a major scale. Uh, it's crazy. So it's to me, it's it's I think it's incredibly beautiful. The thing is, I will never ever 
really understand it because to understand it, I think you have to be listening to that, those scales since you're a child. So for me, I'm, I'm like, if somebody calls me to play oud on a thing, I'm like, well, is it diatonic? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. But if they want a legitimate oud player, I've got a guy in town that, that can play that kind of stuff. In fact, I got him a movie gig that paid him a lot of money. <laughs> and, um, but it was totally something I could not have done. Uh, I've got another Arabic instrument coming. I just ordered it. Um, actually, uh, Sam, I ordered a, uh, it's, it's basically a Kurdish bazooki. So I have an Irish bazooki, <laughs> a Greek bazooki, and I have a Kurdish bazooki coming. And Bruce, you'll like it. It's kind of tuned like a, um, it's kind of tuned like a uh, cigar box guitar. Bruce is making me a cigar box guitar. So. No, those half notes do not really exist in Western instrument. However, Ali, we were just doing them, okay? So the answer is yes and no. And con classical composers, particularly contemporary classical composers, are often messing with, uh, you know, sem uh, um, quarter tones. Um, and Arabic music isn't pure quarter tones because if it was just pure quarter tones, that would still only be 24 notes per octave instead of 54. I mean, they, we're talking slight changes, okay? So, no, when, when a blues player does this, okay, Ollie, I'm playing that C note and I'm bending it kind of, I'm not going all the way to C sharp. You, you could go all the way to C sharp, but more common, Okay, and that's very, very common in blues music. In fact, I might even do it with the six going to the seven. Okay. That's, I'm not playing that. G. Sharp. I'm flat, I'm below the G, but above the F sharp. And I'm below the C sharp, but above the C. So it's in between the, so the, so Western music definitely has in-between notes. Um, Singing-wise, it's a lot easier to do. Violin, any fretless instrument's easier to do. Piano, you can't do it. There's no way to do it on piano. So that's why it's not very common in orchestral music. You, ba you're basically stuck to 12 tones on a piano. Yeah. So... But, but when we, when Western music, musicians use um, the semitones, it's almost always in a, in a blues context, or it's, they're always used differently than, like, maqams are scales in Arabic music, M-A-Q-A-M. -A -A and I mean, Ali, <laughs> I, I don't want to confuse you, because if you're trying to learn Western scales, which I totally understand, you know, it's... I totally understand if you want to play Beatles songs and you want to play rock tunes and you want to, you know, you want to know Western scales. I get that hundred percent, especially if you, if you grew up in Iraq and you ended up, grew up listening to Arabic music and you're like, yeah, I don't want to listen to that right now. <laughs> I get that. Um, but there is a website that I love called Macom world and it's, um, so that's what they, basically the scales are Macombs. Like we say scale, they say Macomb. I think that's how I'm saying it right. I don't know. Um, the cool thing is they have, you can click on Macombs here, um, and it has dozens of, dozens of scales. So you can click on them. Like here, this is, let's see. I just click on to play it, I think, or no? Okay, that's a pure diatonic one. Let me see. Uh, has, yeah. Here, this one. Yeah, that's really, really loud, kind of weird. But anyway, here's the here's the link to this website. You can you can also hear how they're set. You know. Um, yeah. Um, you can also pronunciation. Maqam. Maqamet. Maqam, yeah. 
Yeah, I said it right, the comet. So, um, I, you're looking at when the pentatonic scale, the pentatonic scale goes way back. Uh, because remember, pentatonic scale is actually simpler than the diatonic scale. Uh, it's two less notes. Uh, so, my, you know, a lot of Gregorian chant is pentatonic, right? The, you know, you could have this Gregorian chant that's, uh, you can go back, it's just, you know, five notes sometimes. Really simple. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Take care, Bruce. Sorry, I missed the beginning. Nice. Yeah, because you're on vacation right now. You're out of town. You're out of town, so. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Byzantine music. Yeah. I mean, it goes, it goes, the pentatonic scales go way back. It's not like some guitar player came up, hey, this is cool. Um, pentatonic scales in their use in, you know, it all kind of happened at the same time, like rock and roll right in 1955. And so pentatonic scales being used in, in contemporary music. Um, like I played that one melody. Uh, where's, where's my guitar? That's uh, Seven Come Eleven by Benny Goodman and Charlie Christian guitar. <laughs> and that goes back to the 40s, uh, early 40s. And um, that, maybe even the 30s. Um, but that's... That's that's kind of this pentatonic scale or this blues scale, the major blues scale. But almost more than I think of it as like almost more like a, a jamming on A and then going to flat three to the three, right? Like I showed you this trick. Again, remember like if you want to pre pretend you're a gypsy jazz guitar player. Play a minor chord, okay, and visualize your minor triad, right? And then just play above it and below it. You kind of get that gypsy jazz thing. You do chromatic neighboring tones is what it's called. So there's my there's my goal goal tone. That's my goal. My goal is to get to this note. Or 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 Could go up like that or you can even go I suppose that doesn't sound very gypsy to me um, but that's kind of what's happening with that 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 um, uh, Charlie Christian lick it's just taking that that flat third and just setting up that third of the A chord. I could do that with every note. Right? That sounds like, that reminds me of Stray Cat Strut, right? Now what key was that in? Was it C? You know, that kind of thing, where you, or you could do it with a G chord. It, it that kind of thing has a quirky sound. So when you, it's kind of just a quirky little thing to do. So anyway, yeah, you, the Tetris. Uh, Sam's talking about the Tetris. We've talked about Tetris chords, which is uh, easier to see on piano than guitar, but. That's the first four notes of a C scale. And those are the next four notes of the C scale. So this is the first tetra chord. On piano, it would be. But 
we say tetrachord, but we never really play it like a chord all at the same time. That's almost a cluster. Lena's like, you played it. Um, yeah, and so, but pentatonic scales don't have tetrachords. So it, it doesn't really apply to, you wouldn't play, you wouldn't go A. And then there's the next, there's just, there's just three notes left. No. <laughs> it doesn't have anything. Um, so the major pentatonic scale, well, just, just for the sonic of it, um, you can go back and forth, like on this chord progression, I'm it's totally fine, oops. Totally fine to play the major. But there's something about a pentatonic scale that's, on guitar in particular, it's only two notes per string. So it's really fast. You can really whip through a pentatonic scale. Plus it has a different sound than a diatonic scale. It's a hollower sound. You know, diatonic scales are going to sound more scaly. <laughs> and it's totally fine to use either in this context. But the pentatonic is a different sound than the diatonic. different not a very different sound but a different sound and they're also lend themselves to certain things like the flat the flat third whereas if you throw that in a diatonic scale it's gonna sound kind of weird doesn't work quite as well when you add those weird notes in. I think a pentatonic scale. Also, I, if I play an A minor pentatonic over A, it sounds great. It's kind of out there, but it sounds good. But I can't play an A minor scale over it. A diatonic seven notes. That F sounds weird. The B works okay, but it's not See that? It sounds bad. But if I get rid of those that the the B and the F in the in this case with the minor scale, you're getting rid of the second and you're getting rid of the sixth. It just sounds kind of jazzy bluesy. Okay, so that's why you, you do get rid of um, uh, the pentatonic. And again, penta means five, so you, you couldn't have a seven note. I, that's, notice I'm not calling these pentatonic scales. I'm calling it a major blue scale because it's six notes. We have six notes. We have A, B, C sharp, or A, B, C, C sharp, E, and F sharp. Holly was joining us. Holly. <laughs> Holly and Holly. Holly and Holly. <laughs> if you guys married, Holly Hamza. Hamza. Yeah, you'd be Ho Holly and Holly Hamza. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I mean, Holly Croydon is pretty full, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, man, is that your married name or is that your maiden name? Or is it just a made up name? Uh, 
Oh, let's see. Sam. Let's see. Which Joseph Sam? Aforementioned notes are the half steps in the tetrachord. Yeah. The fourth classes with a major third, the major seven classes with a root. Exactly. Yeah. So you're less likely to have notes that clash and rub in a weird way. Okay. Let's see. Um, we're going to stop here in a little bit. It's getting late. I started way late. I apologize. But. Um, C, yep. So I'm at C, G, C, G, C, E. Yeah, it's kind of a weird tuning. I did it for a pop tune uh, that I got a request for. Oh, funny, now the, now we're C, G, C, G, C, E is that tuning. Yeah. The only weird thing is you got to keep tabs on that, the second string, but the second string is the same as the bottom string. But I love it adding that this is an F note. See, normally that would be an E note. So your brain has to. But I like the E talking about that rub, uh, that that's two, the four three rub there, Sam. That's. and you just can't hear it.
Uh, yeah, ebony fretboard, yep. Yeah, I don't know what songs are in open C. And I'm not even sure if this is typical open C. I mean, in my head, I would think open C would be like C, G, C, E. You would tune the G string down to E, but that would be really loose. This way, I'm actually raising one string, but I'm lowering this note down two whole steps. This one down a whole step, and this one down a whole step. So I got a, I got a power chord on the bottom. I know, it's, it's, Sadie, I don't know what it is about my brain, but I'm pretty good at, like, recalculating everything on the fretboard when I mess, because, because I play a lot, like, the oud is not tuned at all like a guitar in any way, shape, or form, so I pick up the oud, and within about two, three minutes, I'm fine reading music on it, you know, but it takes me a second, I just kind of got to, kind of line, my, I, I think my brain's getting slower on this stuff, so I'm just getting old, I shouldn't say that, It'd be self-fulfilling, but it's more about shape, like, it's more about knowing, like, all, like, in this case, I got three C's, so I know whatever's good on, I got E, you know, E, uh, C, D, E, F, no, wait, there it is. So I just find this major scale, in this case. string is the high E string. It's the only one that's kind of weird. Uh. Yeah, did I do this C tuning? I guess I did. Yeah. Somebody, it was a request. Somebody requested that video. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for doing that. I appreciate it. It's a pretty tuning. It's pretty because it's so low. You got range and the top string is normal. So you can even just play like C and then just go, okay. You can just play on the first string. The first, the, the only strings that haven't been changed are the G string and the E string. It's so pretty though. It's raining. It's raining where Catherine is, so this is my rain. Two chord, see? The one chord. Two chord. Four chord. Five chord. One. So, and I've got a C triad on top. G, C, and E. So basically everything here is like a F power chord with a C on top, a G power chord with a C on top, an A power chord with a C on top, a D power chord with a C on top. I wouldn't want to do E flat power chord with a C on top. Um, I could do maybe that. I could do uh, the one again. I could do, that's not bad. That'd be a D power chord. Oh, I'm sorry. That would be a B-flat power chord with a C on top.
hard part is getting those top notes to ring out. I almost need to use finger picks. Again, it's just a matter of just kind of farting around with it. You know, with most most finger style players that play in open tunings, they're not thinking about um, they're not thinking about uh, the notes they're playing as much as they're memorizing shapes and scales or or notes uh, parallel scales. I mean, this like I said, there's three C's in this tuning, on all three alternating strings. Right? The bottom string, the sixth string, fourth string, and the second string are all C notes. So whatever I do there. It's pretty stuff. And if I want to add maybe the second, I take one of those notes up a whole step. And start experimenting. I can take the top note up a. That is an open C. You're right, Joseph. Oh, well, Friends is too. Uh, but yeah, Bron, Bron, yeah, Bron, however the heck you say. <laughs> Michael Jackson has a song in open C. That's weird. Like Michael Jackson, like Jackson 5 Michael Jackson? From Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana. All right. The show must end when I'm out of coffee. In fact, I'm doing a liquid diet right now, so. Jerry Page did. He just was like, all right, let me just muck around in this scale, in this tuning. rock guitar out all right that has nothing to do with the major blues scale although I could put some major. okay so we got a C
chord. One, two, in the key of C. Two, flat three, three, five, six, one. Hey, Mongo, what's going on? That was me messing around with the major blues scale in the key of C on an open C tuning guitar. All right. Woo, I gotta get something done today. I got work to do. So, I will uh, see you guys Monday. Sorry about being late today, but when, fam when it's a family thing, it's gonna happen. And, um, excuse me, uh, we'll, um, We'll do something next week. Thank you for the, Lena, thank you. Lena, you weren't really on, are you out there? Thank you for the coin. And also, Joseph, thank you for the coffee. Uh, all the, the, the donations are going towards the wedding fund. <laughs> to my daughter's wedding, so. I only have one daughter, so I only have to do this once. So we should be good. Uh, woo! Oh! Yep, everybody say their goodbyes because I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream and when you'll you'll have about I don't know was it 60 90 120 seconds before everybody uh, before it shuts off so uh, but anyway God bless you all thank you so much for watching and hopefully next Monday we'll maybe tackle another scale or something or I'll start heading down a different path I don't know I have no idea what I'm gonna do Cheers.